Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. Today we're going to be showing you how to configure and how to assemble the two main fuselages of our new Tenant V2 Duo. Now the special features about the new Tenant V2 Duo is exactly what you see here. Instead of having one fuselage made out of standard EPS foam that you have to tape together and if you want to reconfigure, you have to untape and then reassemble, you now have two fuselages, which enables you to go from a trainer pusher all the way up to a tractor tail dragger style. Along with not having to tape your fuselages to get the extra strength, you can now use instant glue to be able to assemble and glue and repair. Another key feature that you may see is that these planes have landing gear now. These landing gears not only add a ton of strength to the fuselage, but they also give you the ability to be able to take off and land. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to assemble the landing gear blocks, bed your landing gear, and install it. Once you've completed your build with me here, you're going to be able to continue your build with the original videos of the tenant. Let's go ahead and get our materials in order and we'll get started. All right, friends, the first step we're gonna be doing in building the new V2 tenants is gonna be assembling our fuselages. Now, if you built a previous version of the tenant, this would be the part where we're configuring our fuselage, whether it's gonna be a pusher trainer or a tractor style sport flyer. The neat thing about this kit is we're actually giving you two different separate fuselages. The only thing we're gonna to need to do in this is to configure whether we want a landing gear or no landing gear. Now, after we've completed this video and preparing our two fuselages, everything in the following videos is gonna be the exact same. And to make sure that both of your airplanes are flyable, we've even included the extra accessories like the push rods, the zip ties, and our control boxes. The important question now that you need to choose is whether you want to have a landing gear or no landing gear. Now, because both fuselages are made out of our brand new foam, no taping is going to be required. But if you would like to tape, of course you can. And this material is also safe to be able to be painted with a rattle can spray paint or even brush painted. This foam is also instant glue safe, which means we're going to be able to put our landing gears together and even glue it into the fuselage with instant glue. Let's go ahead and put our two fuselages to the side right now, and let's focus on the back of your data card, which has a pattern that you see just like this. If you want to make your landing gear, the main landing gear for both the tractor and the pusher are going to be made out of this. The only difference is the diameter of the wire that we're going to be using. For the trainer pusher that's going to have a nose wheel, we're going to be using the thinner landing gear wire, and we're also going to be matching this bottom pattern that you see here. Let's go ahead and put this aside, and we're going to bring our wooden kit here, and we're just going to talk about some of the key differences. In our kit, we're going to be including two thinner landing gear wires. And we're also going to have one medium landing gear wire. The medium landing gear wire is going to be intended for a sport flyer. You're going to notice that there's two planks here that are going to be out of our thin 16th inch wood. These are going to be the sandwich plates and you notice that their edge marks are a little bit wider. This is to match the diameter of the thicker landing gear wire for our tractor pusher. Included also in our kit is going to be a 3 32nd plank and that's meant to actually be right in between here. Now for this build video, I'm gonna be showing you how to do the main landing gear. Keep in mind the steps for the main landing gear, whether you're using the thinner wire or the thicker wire, are the exact same. So because I'm gonna be doing our trainer first, I'm simply gonna go ahead and pop off the bottom three, and then I'm gonna save these three pieces for our main landing gear. You'll notice that two of these plates have etch marks, and one is actually cut through. If you wanna do your landing gear, our next step is to take our instant glue, and glue the center plate on. We only want to be able to break off the little tiny medium piece right here in the middle. And once we do that, you'll see that it lines up perfectly with our edge marks. I'm just going to take a little bit of glue, I'm going to lay this right on down, lay this right over the edge marks, and press it in place. Sometimes for alignment, it's kind of nice to hold it up vertical, push it down, and then we can bring it right down horizontally again. Next, we're gonna put on the second piece, and the second piece is gonna line up with the sides and the very top, and you're gonna notice that cavity opened up is the exact diameter of our thinner landing gear wire for our trainer. All I need to do is put a little bit of glue down, and then press it into place. Now on our store, we carry Zap products. We love them, they work fantastic. We're gonna be using, in this case, a foam safe kicker. You can use either the foam safe kicker or you can use a standard kicker on this instant glue and it'll dry just fine. And just to do a quick test, you can see that the cavity is perfectly sized to be able to fit into this. Next, we're gonna bring our pattern that's included with our kit on the back side of our data card. And all we need to do is simply match up these bends with the piece of wire that we have. Again, this step is gonna be the same for both the thin wire and the thick wire. Couple different ways we can do this. We can start from the middle or we can go from the outer edge. I'm just gonna go from the outer edge. And 
And I'm gonna use the table as my friend so I don't hurt my fingers. A little bend. And that looks good. Just take a little bit of it out. Just a little bit more now. That's perfect. Next bend's gonna be at the very top. I just mark this with my finger, take it to the pliers, and then bend it down. If you're just getting into the hobby and this is your very first build, building a trainer is an excellent way to go. And plus, the thinner landing gear wire is much easier to bend than the thicker landing gear wire. A really easy tip to be able to get better bends is to over bend just a little bit because it's easier to open this up than to try to crush this down and then you get a rounder edge. Use the pliers to get the sharpness and then you can always back bend it just a little bit to get what you need. And that looks just about perfect there. Notice as I'm laying this down on the table, I'm also bending it so it lays nice and flat. If it lays flat against the table, both the wheel axles will be perfectly parallel to each other and track nice and straight. All right, our last bend is right here. You can see I'm just a little bit on the outside of that. That is no big deal at all. All I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna match up the final one. So it's just below on that side right there. There we go. Perfect. And finally, I'll go ahead and cut this off. Now we can go ahead and take our landing gear wire and we can do a quick test fit, make sure it matches the angle. And if we matched it to this pattern, you can see that it will just drop right in. Now we'll do just a quick test fit. Make sure that we're happy, everything's flush. And after we've done that, I'm gonna take my instant glue once again. I'm gonna put a bead of glue right over the wire and then right around the perimeter. It's a really good idea to be able to put it right over the wire. And I start and I stop a little bit short just so it doesn't kind of ease out and accidentally glue itself to the table. And if we want, we can come back with a little bit of kicker on each side. It'll soak through the wood and make it cure very quickly. Okay, our main landing gear is now done. Now, if you wanna make the landing gear for your sport flyer, all you have to do is repeat the exact same process with the wood provided and the thicker landing gear wire, and you'll be ready to install it. Let's go ahead and put this aside now, and we're gonna bend the landing gear for our nose wheel for our pusher trainer. The pieces for our nose gear are gonna be located right here on our plank piece of wood. All we need to do is simply crack it loose, and you're gonna notice just like before, we have one portion that's cut through and two portions that are etched. Same process as the main landing gear. We're just gonna open this up and I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of our thin wire and I'm gonna carefully poke this out. It's tabbed at the very bottom and if you do this right, you should be able to pop everything out and you'll still see the very bottom here is still connected. As long as we keep the glue off of this, we can actually keep this in place and take a little razor blade and cut this out at the very end before we put our wire in. So now that we popped out that center piece, Let's go ahead and lay it over our etch marks. We'll do a quick test fit. There we go. And then just like before, we'll come back with some wood. We'll come back with our glue. I'm not too worried about getting it where the wire is. Put it right down in place and we'll let it dry. And while that's drying, we can take our extra piece of thin landing gear wire and we can match the shape of the pattern for our nose gear. I like to start at the very top here because if I mess up this bend, I can always cut that off and do a quite a few more tries before I run out. But if I start from the bottom here and then come up, I've wasted a lot more material. So let's go ahead and first start by going to the very top here. And again, I just kind of like to mark that with my fingernail. You can mark it with a marker if you want. We're gonna bend at 90 degrees. We'll check the pattern a little bit less. Don't worry if it's a little bit long, you can always just cut that shorter. There we go. I 
kind of sized this to where you go up about a half of an inch on your uh, standard style pliers and it should be very close to the shape that you need. There we go. And that looks really good. Nice way to also tell is we can also just take it to the piece that we have and just make sure it drops in like you see here. That's perfect. Finally, we'll lay this right over top again. I'm gonna mark just to the one side of it. And we're gonna make sure that both the bend that we're making and the very first bend that we made are parallel to each other. We're gonna bend that 90 degrees now. And like we did on our main landing gear, we can lay this on the table and we wanna make sure that we bend this where it's all perfectly flat. There we go. And finally, lay this one last time over. I'm gonna take my fingernail and mark right where it needs to cut. It's always easier to cut off a little bit more than to cut off too much. There we go. And one final check. And that's fantastic. I'm just gonna take the edge of my pliers right here and I'm just gonna grab that last little tab that we had that we left in there just to make life easier on us. I'm gonna pull that out. All right, a quick test fit quickly shows that everything lines up perfectly and fits right in there. Now that we're happy with the fit, I'm gonna put a bead of glue right over that wire just like we did on the main section. And move it around a little bit and then we'll place the piece on the top. A little bit of pressure. And a spritz. At this point, the landing gear set for our pusher trainer tenant is now complete. We're ready to go ahead and install this in the fuselage, and then we can put it on our wheels. And as I mentioned before, if you're planning on having this fly off a of tall grass or you don't want to have the landing gear, all you simply need to do is glue those pieces together and install it. Now for the landing gear that you see here, we're gonna be installing that into our pusher tenant, and that's right here. And you're gonna notice that there's no hole cut for the front nose. We're gonna actually be making that, and I'm gonna be showing you how to do it. But first, let's go ahead and install our main landing gear. The main landing gear is also gonna be what gives us the majority of the strength for the main fuselage. Once this piece is glued in, the fuselage will be incredibly strong and durable. First thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna lay this on its back. It doesn't matter which side it goes because they're both even. And we're just gonna do a quick test fit. You'll notice that when I bring this down flush to the bottom, there's still that little tiny notch, and that's exactly what we want because that's where our control box is gonna be able to slide through. Rather than putting glue on both sides, I like to go ahead and glue this one side at a time. You can use hot glue for this step, but if you have instant glue, because this foam is instant glue safe, we're gonna go ahead and use that right now. What I like to do is put a little bit of instant glue here, and I can actually squirt the activator right down on the piece. And since we've already practiced, we already know exactly where we want to put it. And we're just going to slide that right down in place. And we're going to hold it there for about a minute. Now keep in mind, if you're using instant glue for the very first time, the chemical reaction as it dries does give off heat and fumes. So make sure you're not in an enclosed environment and make sure that you're not hovering your eyes or your face over where the glue dries or else those fumes are gonna rise up and irritate your eyes, nose, and face. After about a minute has passed, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this cavity. And you can see this foam is nice and flexible. You can actually squirt this side here, and then we can bring it right down, nice and flush. You should have a little bit of pressure here as you push this together, where it's gonna kinda of conflict against itself. That's exactly what we want. I've held this for about a minute, and as you can see, it's incredibly strong. You guys remembered in a release video, we demonstrated how strong this was by using it as a bat. Now that the main rear portion of our landing gear is done, we're gonna put our attention towards the very front nose here. The very front nose, if we look where our battery bay is, we're gonna to wanna to go right in the middle of that, and we're also gonna angle that forward slightly. Now it's important to note that the center of the wheel is gonna be right here which means when we put this in and install this in place, we're actually gonna offset this just a little bit so that the center of the landing gear is right over top the center of the nose. If it's off a little bit to the left or the right, no worries about that. You're gonna also notice that I'm not gonna have this actually vertical from, I guess, the horizontal above the bottom of the fuselage. I'm gonna have this perpendicular to the surface of the fuselage, which is gonna kick this wheel forward just a little bit. This is gonna help us with handling and to keep that nose forward. 
What I like to do is kind of mark where it is, rock it back and forth, and that's gonna make an indent. And once I've made that mark, I can come back with a razor blade. And I'm simply gonna, again, plunge at the angle that I want it in. Make two little cuts there. And I can use a pair of pliers and pluck out the extra cavity. We don't have to go all the way through to the bottom of the battery. All we simply need to do is slide this in. Now before I glue in the front nose gear, we want to make sure that the plane has just a natural positive angle of attack. The front nose wheel is a little bit smaller than the main landing gear wheels. I'm going to actually install the landing gear wheels right now to make sure that when we glue this front in, we can adjust this a little bit to make sure we still have that positive angle of attack. In other words, the very front leading edge of the wing is going to be a little bit higher than the trailing edge of the wing. Included with our kits, not only the wheels, but also wheel collars for this build. This is incredibly useful to make sure that your wheels don't slide off. So as you can see here with my wheels installed, this has pretty much a perfectly neutral level of attack. In other words, as this goes faster and faster, it does have a pretty good chance to be able to lift off. What I would like to do is just move this out ever so slightly, and it's absolutely fine for the block to show just a little bit. And that's gonna give us a really nice angle of attack, just a breath positive. This positive angle of attack is gonna enable the airplane to naturally lift off when it has enough speed. I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball basically how much. I got roughly about an eighth of an inch there. I can then go back with my instant glue, fill that cavity, and I'm just gonna spray both sides of my wood and then slide it in. Now the pusher configuration of our tenant, the trainer version, probably the very first version if you're learning to fly is now complete and we're ready to move on to the next step. But first, I'm gonna show you how to install the landing gear block on the wheels in our tractor sport conversion. So let's go ahead and put this aside. And you can see we've already built our landing gear using the exact same process as we did before. The only main difference is this is the thicker wire because we're putting the bigger bush tires on it. Now this is our tractor configuration of our tenant. And the reason we call it a tractor configuration is because the motor's up in the front and it's pulling it forward much like a tractor pulls a plow forward or a tractor trailer. It's gonna be the exact same process as before. We're first gonna do a quick test fit and we're gonna notice it kind of squeezes in there. And we're gonna bring this up just to the bottom of our control module, just like you see here. Once we're happy with that fit, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some hot glue. This time I'll just put on the foam. Doesn't matter whether we put on the foam or the plywood. And you can see I'm kind of keeping this open. I'm gonna lay this down right where we want it. And if you'd like to squirt a little bit of activator in there just to make it glue a little bit faster, that is absolutely fine. We're gonna let this dry for about a minute and then we're gonna open this up again and we're gonna glue the other side. And I'm just gonna open this up just a little bit. A little bit of instant glue there. There we go. Now that our landing gear is glued in, let's go ahead and take the supplied wheel collars and install our wheels. All right, friends, we are now done with configuring the two fuselages of our new Tenant V2 Duo. From this point on, we get to build together using the exact same videos as our original version. The main difference is now you can set up both configurations the way that you see fit and be able to fly both configurations together with either your friends or your family. Can't wait to build again with you, and we'll see you next time.